Welcome to the Shortwave Radio Channel, and we're going to talk about the geomagnetic storms. So, we talked about solar flares. We talked about how most of the time the effect is rather immediate. Solar flare equals daylight side of Earth absorption will last a few minutes to maybe an hour, maybe two in the case of really big um, solar flares. But it actually gets back to normal quite quickly in general. And then there's a waiting phase. So when there's a solar flare, often there is something called a CME or a coronal mass ejection. It's a cloud of plasma from the sun that is ejected by the explosion of that solar flare and that travels in space. Not all solar flares create necessarily big CMEs, but the bigger the flare, the bigger the chance of a CME and the bigger the chance that it's a big one, a big cloud of plasma. The second thing is, where was that solar flare on the sun compared to the Earth? If the solar flare is on the edge of the sun, well, that means that most of the energy of the plasma that's ejected is actually going away in space, away from Earth. We might have a glancing blow by the edge, but in general, it's not as bad because it's not Earth-directed. But when a sunspot is pretty much centered towards us, that's where things can be quite interesting. A big solar flare or a solar flare can actually um, eject a uh, coronal mass ejection. That earth directed flare, of course, that means the plasma gas is earth directed and will reach Earth. Now, that takes a certain time. When a solar flare erupts, the first wave that makes that absorption higher and might actually fade your signals temporarily, that is particles that go at speed of light. And the sun is eight minutes away in light speed. So it takes eight minutes for that to happen. The gas cloud is much slower. And the speed will depend on how powerful the explosion from the solar flare is. A cloud of plasma from a solar flare can take anywhere from, you know, a day and a half to two days to four or five days before reaching Earth. The faster, the bigger the punch is going to be in our magnetic field. And the slower, the less effect usually it has. But there's other things in play that actually also make solar flares active, uh, more active or less active. Once it hits the geomagnetic field, depending on how positioned the magnetic field of the Earth is, because it's you know, kind of a, it's almost like a living organism. It's always in movement. So sometimes if the particles arrive and that they almost pretty much, um, you know, cancel each other, the effect isn't very high. Sometimes they add up. That effect is much, much bigger. And when geomagnetic activity starts, it means a lot of particles are actually reaching the upper atmosphere. That's why we get auroras. Particles from the sun, are actually energizing the upper atmosphere and that creates light uh, that you see in the auroras. Well, when that happens also, one of the biggest problems is the ionosphere is up there. It also is disturbed by those particles hitting the geomagnetic field. So there's gonna be absorption, there's gonna be all sorts of weird things happening to the ionosphere uh, to the point where it can actually be totally unusable for HF propagation. But that will be often, and most of the time, two, three, four days later. So if you see a solar flare yesterday, the effect happened yesterday. Today, no solar flare, nothing major happening. Even if a coronal mass ejection is coming towards us, conditions can be actually normal with propagation being quite good. So you can't blame a solar flare from you know, 12 hours ago for the bad propagation. You can blame it if it happened half an hour ago, an hour ago, but 12 hours ago, you know, ago or, or, or later, and if you're not on the uh, side of the, the, the Earth where, where the sun is, um, solar flares have pretty much almost no effect on the dark side of the Earth because 
the particles are not reaching that side. But the geomagnetic field, that can last a long time. Now, that is not something that happens and just, you know, is short and it's just half an hour. With big coronal mass ejections, when they hit the, magne the, the, the magnetosphere, the, the magnetic field of the Earth, what happens is this can actually have all sorts of effect. And the magnetic field itself can resonate from that and let the solar wind actually reaching the upper atmosphere um, for a long time or in waves, for example. There's all sorts of effect happening. A geomagnetic field can last hours, several CMEs in a row. And we see that when there's, uh, for example, the sunspot will uh, launch several solar flares in the space of several hours. You can actually have several days of bad propagation with that effect. So it's important to note the difference between a solar flare and its effect and a geomagnetic field. Um, a geomagnetic storm, sorry, and its effect on shortwave propagation. If you enjoy my videos, please subscribe, give us thumbs up. Thank you for watching.